So, growing up in the 80s, I was quite into horror films. And every Saturday, I would go around uh, uh, Andrew Divis's house. In fact, a few of us would go around Andrew Divis's house. Andrew Divis was a friend I used to know at school. We used to call him uh, nicknamed Porky. He was a bit uh, robust. And um, we all used to go around Andy's house of a weekend. We'd go to the video store and we'd we'd pick up either a, some kind of violence, I don't know, action flick like Death Race 2000 or, uh, I don't know, Mad Max, Mad Max 2, or we'd get a horror film. So throughout the 80s, I was really into horror films as well as science fiction as well. But I just wanted to give you some insights into my three sort of 70s, 80s horror films that really stand out for me. And the first one in this collection, and I'm going to put this, what player, I'm going to put these in a selection of one to three, one being the best and three being the worst, and the three is not the worst, it's fantastic. But I've got to put these in some kind of order. And I'm still deciding at the moment, but I think I've got it. Okay, so in third place, Sam Raimi's 1981 film, The Evil Dead. I remember going into the video store uh, for this uh, in a, a little town where I used to live, Wensbury, and uh, it was a video store called Woods, I believe, and uh, I went in, picked this up. It had got the usual design of the of the recorder on the front so it wasn't this design but it was the original design with that recorder on and um, had something and the horrific person in the middle I can't, I can't think who that was now but um, I picked it up and I went to the till and said yeah I'll, I'll go for this it looks nice and violent and horrific and I, I remember the um, sorry let me just get a, a lock again on this camera And the woman at the till says, are you sure you want to hire this? It's, it's quite nice. I said, yeah, that's fine. Said, are you sure you want to hire it? And, and that is the only time that I went into a video store and the, and the woman behind the counter was kind of pre-warning me, this is nasty stuff, are you sure you want it? And of course, that made me want the film more. So I hired the film, I took it home. I remember it was a Sunday and I sat there with mum and dad, my uncle, Stan, and we sat there and we watched The Evil Dead. And I must say, we were pretty horrified. I know my uncle, uh, at quite a few points, he got his, uh, he was watching this in between his, his hands kind of thing, you know. He was pretty horrific at the time. And I know some people class this as uh, a comedy of sorts, but you know what, to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't really class this as a comedy. I think Evil Dead 2, um, Evil Dead 3, Army of Darkness, I class those as comedies, but really I class this more of a horror film than anything else. And what I liked about this is, is how it was shot, how Sam Raimi shot this film on a completely shoestring budget where you got that camera scene going through the woods on some kind of dolly and it, you, you, you just... When he did those shots in the woods, you felt like that you were outside, alone, in the woods, in danger. I just thought it was absolutely magical. And it was such a raw film, the way it was shot. Um, it was just, it was, it was very graphic. I mean, if, if you show this today, and, and kids will see this today, they'll probably think, God, that's rubbish, the effects are rubbish, and they are, they are. But at the time, I felt it, it was quite a standout movie and it was certainly a turning point in, in horror films for me. And uh, so that's in third place, the original 1980 Evil Dead from Sam Raimi. And next up, give me a second, I'm still deciding about these. This one, first and second, is a really tough, a really tough one for me because I, I love both of these films. Okay. I'm going to go for, in second place, I'm going to go for An American Werewolf in London. What a film this was. It was like no other horror film 
no other werewolf film that you would ever see because it did have a kind of comedy and light hearted element within the film. Um, it had great music in there. It was quite a strange mix because it was a horror film. You'd expect that sort of deep uh, violin heavy sort of Hammer House horror uh, music score, but it wasn't. They were playing sometimes quite upbeat tunes and, uh, and, and some great tunes at that. Jenny Agata, obviously looking very dishy in those days. But I think the thing that, that, that really stood out for me was just the effects of the actual wolf. When you actually saw that transformation for the first time, it, 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 it was like nothing that we'd ever seen before. The way the, the face changed, it contorted, the jaw came outwards. It was, just, it was like nothing else. And as soon as I saw that scene, I was completely gripped with this film. It was a, it was a very offbeat horror film. And I loved its pacing. If I had to criticise it, one one thing I'd have to criticise is the ending. I felt like it stopped quite abruptly. They were down that alleyway, and um, and the werewolf just got shot with one bullet. That was it. End of film. That was it. And I felt like no, you just can't end it there. You've got to give us more than that. But really, it didn't need to give any more. It had already given a fantastic film with extraordinary effects. So that is my number two, An American Werewolf in London. I forget the year of that, maybe about uh, 81 was it, 82? So then it comes to number one and uh, I believe I saw, this was one that I saw around Andrew Davis's house again and it was the first time I saw this and that was Dawn of the Dead. George Romero's trying to stop the glare on that, Dawn of the Dead. Another one where, okay, the special effects are nothing special. But the way it was paced, uh, it, was, it was fun. The, 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 the actual concept of this film is where a, there was about four or five people who decided to move away from the mainland uh, obviously there's been a zombie apocalypse and they want to move away from all that crap and they find a deserted um, mall or shopping center as we call it in the uh, in the uk and they decided to land the helicopter on the top move inside and eventually clear out the zombies from inside the shopping center so, that's, so they've got this whole shopping center all to themselves and really it's it's that journey of of uh, trying to clear the mall, the shopping centre of the zombies and on the way obviously there are some uh, quite gruesome deaths and, uh, and part of their team parts of their team get killed through it but it's just I, I just think it's, it's a horror film but at the same time I felt it quite a fun film to watch even though it was did have quite horrific moments in there uh, but it, it was just again one of those fun films to watch and it's got everything, it's got the action, it's got the adventure and who, want, who wouldn't want to be locked in a massive mall all by themselves to just do whatever they want, go in all the shops, get the clothes, play on the slot machines. It was just, I just thought that was just a really fantastic idea and definitely for me Romero's best uh, zombie film. I wasn't so keen on the first one, and I know there's probably an argument that the first one would probably be the best, but really it didn't really do it for me. I think if I had to write Romero's zombie films in order, then it would be this in first place, then Day of the Dead, and then Night of the Dead, which as I say, I'm not really keen on. But for me, Dawn of the Dead is number one. It's from 1978. Uh, it's not for everyone. I'd imagine this would be hysterical to a... 15 year old kid of today but back then it it, it gathered a lot more ground and it was uh, it, it was I found it very, a very interesting and fun film to watch so that's my three horror films he was off um, American World in, in London is that Jack Goodman yeah that's Jack Goodman yeah so he was off American World in London and but all three of those films if you haven't seen them 
Uh, like I say, younger generation might not work for, but uh, if, you, if you're my age and you haven't seen those, then it's worth a dip in there and I'm, I'm sure that you'll get something out of it. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's my little insight into my favourite 70s, 80s films that I liked as a kid.